You are watching TFI. Uh, normally, I don't like to buy into hype and do videos on stuff that hasn't been released yet. It makes my brain itch to talk about rumours and what ifs, buts, maybes, especially with AMD, mate, because historically they've been the kings of overhyping stuff and failing to deliver. But uh, there's been a paradigm shift by the looks of it. Yesterday over at Computex, Dr. Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD, stood up on stage, delivered a keynote speech and amazed the world. Oh, well, the world of PC enthusiasts anyway. So this is something which is quite quite close to my channel, actually. I've done a lot of work on PC benchmarking for 3D CAD over the last couple of years, as well as the Autodesk University class, buying the right workstation for Autodesk and Vendor, which involves picking the right parts, doing follow-up videos, various benchmarks, that kind of stuff. And so far, Intel has been massively dominant across the board for our market. That's Autodesk and Vendor, Fusion 360, and most 3D CAD applications, which rely on single-threaded one core running very fast with good instructions per clock and Intel's been dominant in that area. And a couple of years ago AMD came out with their first generation Ryzen CPUs on the Zen architecture which was a huge step forward for them as a company. Uh, it brought them out of the dark ages and it was great for certain games, it was great for content creators, video edit and photo edit and other professional workloads but for us it wasn't so good. It worked fine, you could build a Ryzen desktop unit and it would be fine it would work it would power 3d card but it was just never as good at the same price point as an intel alternative so it just couldn't light the candle at generation one or generation two ryzen but as of yesterday mate codename matisse amd ryzen 3000 series cpus you can see them up on screen now we've got a range of five and these are paradigm shifting these could hugely change the game and knock intel off the top spot it all depends on whether they can deliver on the specs that they're promising so i'm going to probably be going in at the top level ryzen 9 3900x because that runs at the fastest boost frequency at 4.6 gigahertz so the hopefully the core that inventors using will utilize that 4.6 gigahertz and it comes in at 499 dollars which is an excellent price when you consider the intel alternative on stage, AMD compared the 3900X, not to the 9900K, but to the 9920X Extreme Edition. That's a $1,200 CPU from Intel with 12 cores running at, I think, boost frequency of 4.4 or 4.5 gigahertz. And the 3900X absolutely wiped the floor with it in single-threaded performance by 14%. And across all 12 cores, multi-threaded performance I think was a 6% uplift over Intel. All that while it's pulling less power from the wall uh, and also being less than half the price. That is an incredible value proposition and that could mean the 3900X is the new CPU of choice for anyone building a no compromise desktop uh, for home. Obviously ignoring Xeons and Threadrippers. And lower down the range, I've got a feeling the best bang for your buck price to performance CPU here in the range is going to be the 3700X. At $329 you're going to have 4.4 gigahertz, you're going to have 8 cores mate, 8 cores uh, and also only 65 watts TDP. That is looking like an incredible value CPU and then lower down the stack the Ryzen 5 3600 6 cores over 4 gigahertz for $199 is an amazing value proposition so that could be great for budget builds so across that yep you've got an absolute amazing range of just hoping that amd can deliver on this and it's not just another carefully selective range of benchmarks which don't really reflect real world performance which is kind of what we saw with first and second generation ryzen and if you're sitting there thinking to yourself yeah but mate the 9900k runs at 5 gigahertz and that 3900X runs at 4.6, so you said Inventor needs a fast core. Well, Intel clearly wins. It's 5 gigahertz. It's not that simple, mate, unfortunately. Uh, 5 gigahertz on Intel will not be the same as 5 gigahertz on AMD. These new CPUs from AMD are on the 7 nanometer manufacturing node, which you'd, you'd have to Google. I can't, obviously, I can't go into that here. And Intel's are still on 14 nanometers, so it's a completely different manufacturing process. So 4.6 on an AMD 7 nanometer node could be better than 5 gigahertz on Intel's 14 nanometer node. Even if, let's just say, worst case scenario, the 3900X is a few seconds slower on real world operations than the 9900K. So you're doing large drawn view computations, you're doing stress analysis, you're doing shrink wraps, opening large assemblies. It's a few seconds slower per operation than the 9900K. Honestly, I'd probably still put out a recommendation for the 3900X because the 12 cores, mate, the 9900K has got eight cores, which is great, but 12 is greater than eight. 
<laughs> and that's great for other things that you're going to be doing on your workstation. Granted, Inventor and other 3D card applications, Fusion 360, etc., won't be able to use 12 cores, but you don't just use 3D card applications. Me personally, I use Autodesk Vred, I do virtual reality, I do a bit of gaming now and again, editing on Premiere Pro. I will use those 12 cores and I'll be glad to take the performance boost on those other applications over a couple of seconds slower on a few inventor operations for me personally. Not only that as well, but this AMD third generation Ryzen also introduces PCI Express generation 4, which means it's opening up the ceiling. It is opening up the floodgates, mate, on solid state drive performances. So when we start to get more solid state drives that are built on PCI Express generation 4, we are going to get some breathtaking, neck break speeds on solid state drives and if you put a couple of those solid state drives into your system in a raid configuration mate you're going to get some absolutely mental solid state drive storage speeds uh, graphics cards as well will be able to utilize pci express generation 4 but currently as it stands today we're not really doing anything with graphics technology that maxes out the pci express third generation anyway but uh, yeah, I think that's probably about enough for now. This is all we've got to go off. We've got some charts on stage at Intel comparing various benchmarks, but don't forget these are going to be very carefully selected by AMD. They're not going to tell the full picture, but it is looking very promising so far. So the reason I'm bringing this up is if you are planning a system upgrade this year and you've got something like a 6700K or even a 7700K, this 3900X or this third generation Ryzen, even down to a 3700X, could be a great upgrade option from those Skylake or KB Lake CPUs that you might be running right now, or even older Xeon systems. So there you go, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this. I have put a message into AMD to try and get some review samples of these CPUs so I can get early benchmarks done on Inventor and Fusion 360, but it's just the way it is, they're throwing them all out to gamers and people doing WinZip tests and crunching Excel spreadsheets. So I'll, I'm going to keep trying. Feel free to tweet them on my behalf and say, oh, can you send me one over? But <laughs> I very much doubt it. I'm probably going to have to put my hand in my pocket and buy uh, an entire AMD system myself with a new motherboard. Uh, it's going to come with a new chipset, the X570 chipset, but it will be backwards compatible. So I hear with all other AMD AM4 socket motherboards. But um, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there, mate. It's exciting. It is. I'm hoping it's not going to be another letdown. I do become very cynical with AMD launches now. But this is looking quite promising. So yeah, keep an eye on this. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.